Hey there, this is Kevin Knebel in beautiful Monument, Colorado at 7,500 feet of elevation. And I want to say thank you for taking a few minutes out of your busy day to watch this video in the Schweiky Media Business Booster webinar series on elegantly and simply creating LinkedIn networking introductions. It's very, very simple. Now, what I'm about to show you is has worked extremely well for myself and for my clients all around the world. Um, we've generated millions and millions of dollars in new business, client acquisition, referrals, strategic alliances, networking partnerships. So what I'm about to show you is not some theoretical mumbo jumbo that maybe it's going to work and you'll be the guinea pig. No, this works very, very well for the clients that I teach it to. Let me just take a quick moment and just mention who I am. My name is Kevin Knebel. I'm an international speaker, author, trainer, coach, and consultant. I live in Colorado. I speak in about one city per week somewhere in the world, could be Australia, could be London, could be San Francisco, and I've been uh, speaking, training, coaching, and consulting on how to use LinkedIn since 2004. Now, that's ironic because LinkedIn's only been around since 2003. I got on LinkedIn within 60 days of the launch back in 2003, so I've been doing this since the earth was cooling. Prior to doing this type of work, I was very blessed to be the top salesperson in the world for four separate and distinct organizations. I only mention that because most people in social media come from marketing backgrounds. I do not. I come from a sales background. So my clients have told me over the years that the way that I teach and the things, my principles, my strategies, and my routines tend to be at some level fundamentally different from what most of the other people out there are teaching, not because I'm some enlightened Buddha. I just come from a different background. So that's who I am. If you ever want to connect with me on LinkedIn, please feel free to send me an invitation to connect with me on LinkedIn. And because I have over 30 million second and third degree connections, when I accept your invitation, about seven to eight million connections are going to go into your account. Just mention that you heard me on the Schweiky Media series. So that's enough about me. What I want to talk about today briefly, and again, if we had more time, I could get into all the nuances and the nooks and the crannies, but I'm going to do this high level today, is I want to talk about how to get warm introductions to your best prospects or your best potential clients through people that you know well. Now, the gentleman that's recording this right now is a gentleman named Steve Viner. So I'm going to use Steve as an example because it's easier for me to demonstrate this that way. Let's say that I know Steve really well. So as I use this example, I want you to be hearing me right now and thinking about people that you know already, people that know you, like you, and trust you, people that you know and like and trust. Maybe they're some of your existing clients. Maybe they're coworkers. Maybe they're people where you used to. I don't know, but I want you to use as the litmus test people that know you, like you, and trust you. So let's assume that Steve and I know each other, like each other, and trust each other very much. What if I were to give Steve a call like this or give him an email like this? Hey, Steve, you know what? I think that there are some people that I know that would potentially be good clients for you and would see value in the kind of work that you do. And I think, Steve, that you probably know some people that would be good clients or referrals for me. Steve, would you be open to a conversation about a mutually beneficial referral relationship? Now, Steve, being the smart, handsome man that he is, is going to say, well, yeah, Kev, that's kind of a no-brainer. So if we lived close to each other, then I would get, you know, we would go and meet at a Denny's or an IHOP or go meet at a restaurant, and I'd bring my laptop. Steve and I are in different parts of the world, so we could set up a go-to meeting session or a WebEx session, however we could see each other's computer screen. Now let's pretend that I'm sitting right next to Steve right now in the IHOP, and I open up LinkedIn, and I go and I open up his LinkedIn profile. So here's Steve. I told you he was a very smart, handsome guy. Look at this guy. It looks like George cross between George Clooney and Brad Pitt, right? So here I can look at his LinkedIn profile, and I can scroll down because we are first-degree connections, and that's very important. You want to be a first-degree connection with whomever you're going to do this with. I can scroll down to his connections. As a first-degree connection, you can see your first-degree connections connections, if that wasn't confusing enough. And I can see that he's connected to over 500 people. LinkedIn being the database that it is, shows me that he and I are already have eight connections in common. He has one new connection. But what I really want you to see is this magnifying glass. 
anything that I type in this magnifying glass, and I mean anything, if I type the word lasagna in there, it doesn't make any sense, I'm just trying to prove a point. If I type the word CEO in there, if I type the word Austin, Texas in there, whatever word I type in there, when I hit search, it's going to search through all of his LinkedIn connections for anybody that has that in their profile. So we'll put CEO in there, and I hit search. He has 79 people that he is connected to on LinkedIn that have CEO in some way in their LinkedIn profile, including this goofy looking guy right here. That's me, by the way. So here, when I hit advanced search, this opens up a whole world of opportunities because now I could say, well, you know what, a good referral for me would be a CEO in the Austin area. So if I clicked on Austin, it's just going to pull up these 13 people. If I say, no, you know what, I'm looking for CEOs in San Francisco, then it just pulls up the four. Maybe I, I have no interest in geography. Maybe I'm interested in people that work in a certain industry. So here he's got 10 people in marketing and advertising that have CEO in their job title in some manner. So I could do it by geography, I could do it by industry, I could do it by companies they used to work at, I could do it by schools they went to. I mean, when I say LinkedIn's a database, it is a database on steroids. So you get the point. Now, if I were really sitting there next to Steve, I actually would not go this route. I operate from what I call my pay it forward business model. It's really very, very simple, and it works mind-bogglingly well. But you have to buy in philosophically to it for it to work for you. So if you're a jerk, if you're a real piece of work, if you're somebody who's all about me, 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 i got to screw you before you screw me, the world is all built on lack, and if that's you, I'm not trying to put you down. You're just not – what I'm about to teach you is not going to resonate with you. Again, different strokes for different folks. I tend to work with very um, heart-centered, caring professionals that are very good at, their, at what they do for a living, but they also have a deep interest in creating, nurturing, and deepening relationships with other people. My business is 99% by invitation and referral only and has been for years. I don't say that to brag. I say that because it's evidence of the things that I teach that all of my business is pretty much inbound. People calling me, emailing me, word of mouth, that type of thing. I don't really do traditional marketing or advertising. I don't go calling speakers bureaus or send out RFPs and proposals. Again, I'm not trying to be cocky. I'm just telling you as validation of what I teach, as you are about to see. So if I were doing this with Steve, I would not start with Steve. I would not start with, hey, Steve, let me tell you what a good referral for me is. I always pay it forward first. So if I'm sitting with Steve in the IHOP, let me show you what I would do. I would go to my homepage on LinkedIn. I'd go to the Advanced button. This is what I call the LinkedIn Holy Grail. And most of the time, the reason why most people don't get as many referrals as they could is not a really complex thing. It's really just because they don't know how to, they don't have a simple, elegant system for asking for referrals in a way that's not desperate or slick or salesy, but also they don't know how to make it easy for the people that could refer them business. If I said to Steve, hey, Steve, could you refer me some people? He may have the best intentions to refer me people, but he doesn't quite know what a really good prospect or referral for me looks like. So watch how I'm going to make this so simple. I'm sitting next to Steve in the IHOP, and I say, Steve, I could probably refer you a lot of business, but I don't quite understand yet what a really good referral for you looks like. So let's unpack that. I go to my advanced people search. I click on first-degree connections. These are the people that I am personally connected to as a first-degree connection. And I ask Steve a couple questions. Hey, Steve, do you have a geographic region where you would like to have more clients? He's either going to say yes or no. Let's, for the purposes of this example, let's say he says yes. And I go down to location, and he says, I'm looking for more clients in the greater Denver area. So I could go anywhere on earth I want to go. I'm going to put in a Denver zip code, which is 80111. And I'm just going to do a 50-mile search. And then I say, before I click search to see who I'm connected to as a first-degree connection, might there be a certain job title that would potentially be a good referral for you? And he says, CEO. 
or he says HR manager, or whatever he says. It doesn't matter to me, right? So I'm just going to put CEO in there, and I'm going to say current. Now, I could also say, do you typically like CEOs in a particular industry? And he could say, yeah, I'm looking for CEOs in the biotech industry or any combination of 100 different industries. He could say he's looking for people that went to a particular college, people that speak some French. He's looking for people that are owners in their company. He's looking for people that have companies with 50 to 500 employees. So when I say LinkedIn's a database, it is a data friggin' base. Friggin's not a swear, it's a New Jersey term of endearment, okay? So it's a database, but because this is a brief video, I'm not going to get too much into the weeds here. So I'm just going to look for anybody that I'm connected to who's currently a CEO within 50 miles of the zip code has a first-degree connection. I hit search, LinkedIn searches all my connections, pulls up 173 people. Now I ask them, let's look at these people. And I start at the top, and I say, does this guy look like somebody that would potentially be a good client for you? Now, we can both look at this guy's profile. We can go look at his Twitter account. We can go look at his website. The more we look at his information, which, by the way, he wants us to look at. We're not stalking this guy. He put all this information in his profile because he wants us to see it. The more we look at his stuff, the more we're going to be able to make a determination or he's going to be able to make a determination as to whether or not this Jan guy is a good prospect. But the number one thing that I'm going to ask um, Steve to do is as we look at his information, Steve, what I would ask you to do is find as many things as you can that you have in common with this guy in his profile. So we look at the profile, and he sees all these things. You know, Steve, do you, are you interested in entrepreneurship? Yes, I am, Kev. Do you have an interest in sports? Yes, I do, Kev. So we look at his profile, and where I'm really going with all this, this is just the way God made me, the way I'm wired. I always look for the personal stuff. And I would say, Steve, do you have any interest in basketball? And Steve goes, yeah, I like basketball. Or, no, I don't like basketball. Doesn't matter to me. Steve, do you have kids? Yeah, i got a bunch of kids. Well, this guy's got five. Again, I'm just looking at what this guy wants me to know. He likes being on a skateboard, a snowboard, or a surfboard. He's mesmerized by gadgets. By, now, again, I, you know, I can see all this information. So let's say Steve says, you know what, I like surfing and I like, and I like skiing. Whatever Steve says, watch what I do next, and this is where the magic happens. I say, Steve, does this look like a guy who could potentially be a good client or possible referral source for you? And Steve says, yeah, I think he could. I say, great. Now, I'm a very simple thinker. I figured out many years ago that every client, every prospect, every date you've ever gone on, every human being you've ever done business with, if you reduce it down to its simplest parts, it always started with a conversation, not a sales pitch, a conversation. So watch what I could do here. I go to Jan, I hit send message, and what if I were to say something like this? Hi, Jan, I hope your 2015 is, or 2016 is off to a great start. I was on the phone with my good friend Steve earlier today, and I couldn't help think of you because you're very good at what you do, and so is Steve. And I'm a big believer that good people should meet good people. Whether or not you guys have a reason to do business together or in some way refer business to each other, I'd like to connect you here on LinkedIn because you should at least be aware of each other and be in each other's LinkedIn network. And I noticed that you're both big skiers and snowboarders, and you both have a couple kids, so if you were sitting next to each other in an airport bar, you'd probably be new best friends. Anyway, I've copied Steve on this email. I got to run. Rock on, Kev. Then I go up here where it says include others on this message. And then all I do is I start to type Steve's name in. So LinkedIn immediately looks for anybody I'm connected to named Steve. And once I type his name in there, I click on him. And just like you would send an email, I could send this, and both of these people would get this email. Now, let me ask you a very simple rhetorical question because you can't answer. Do you think that Jan would respond to this message? In my experience in doing this kind of you know, work for 25 years in sales and over 13 years on LinkedIn is that I have over 87% of the people that I send this kind of a message to respond. 
Now, if Jan didn't respond, I'm not going to, you know, make an assumption that he's stupid or he's an idiot. Maybe he didn't get the message. Maybe it was buried in his inbox. But if he doesn't respond and he read it, I just got to assume that he's just not interested in meeting nice people that potentially could refer him business. I'm not going to call him stupid, but I'll tell you something. I ain't calling him Einstein either. That's for sure. The stupidest thing that Steve could do, and he would never do this because Steve's not stupid. The stupidest thing that Steve could do would be to respond to this message, hey, Jan, nice to meet you. Any friend of Kevin's is a friend of mine. Could I possibly handle your marketing, and would you send me a bag of money? That would be dumb. That would be what I call kissing on the first date. Not only would it be kissing on the first date, it would be kissing on the first date and using tongue, okay? So let me point out something so obvious, but it's the 900-pound elephant in the middle of the room that most people miss, and we'll start wrapping this webinar up with this. We get good at what we study. We, stent, we tend to be not so good at what we don't study. If you were to take a survey of business professionals, and I don't care what industry they're in, and I don't care what their job title is, if you were to take a survey of business professionals, you would find a very, 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 very small percentage of business professionals that study, not just read books on it, but study interpersonal, relational, and networking skills. And we have all the evidence around us to, show, to prove this to us because most people, when they go to a networking event or they try to connect in business, they are kissing on the first date. They need to slow down. So with Steve, when Jan responds and says something like, hey, Kev, thanks for the message. Nice to meet you, Steve. The worst thing Steve could do would be to jump on that guy like he's a prospect. The best thing that Steve could do would be to use my pay it forward model and say, hey, Jan, it's nice to meet you too. I'm connected to a lot of people here on LinkedIn. Perhaps I could introduce you to some people or open some doors that would help you in some way. And all he's done, but you've got to believe it, folks. You can't just say that and think that this is some clever ninja marketing trick. It's not. This is not bait and switch. This is about creating mutually beneficial win-win relationships. Because if he offers to pay it forward to Jan in some way, the likelihood of Jan getting to know him, like him, and trust him is exponentially higher than any other way that Steve tries to open up a relationship with Jan. Short of handing Jan a bag full of money, there's probably no other way that Steve is going to get his attention faster than offering to pay it forward and then let the relationship start to nurture over time. Because at some point, Jan's going to say, Steve, tell me a little bit about what you do. As long as Steve doesn't jump on him like a pit bull on a mailman, and just has a natural conversation. Oh, let me tell you a little bit more about this. Let me tell you a little bit more about that. Let the conversation go wherever it's supposed to go. So this very simple method that I've shown you today, this is mind-bogglingly effective when you come from a place of paying it forward. See, what most people do in marketing, what most people do in business is they try to throw a lot of mud on the wall and hopefully something sticks. If you understand at a deep level what I'm teaching you here today, and again, this is very fast, you understand that I'm not throwing mud on the wall. I'm finding the people that would be my best prospects or clients. I'm figuring out who I know that knows them, and then I'm opening up the door with a pay it forward model versus a, hey, I think I can help you, you know, versus a, hey, buy my product model. It's a fundamentally different way of showing up in the business world. Again, I'm not saying that I'm some enlightened Buddha. I'm just saying that this approach is fundamentally different than what most people out there are doing. If you're ever interested in learning more about what I do, go to my website, kevincanevel.com, subscribe to my free newsletter. Please feel free to look through my newsletter archive. Please feel free to also send me a LinkedIn invitation. Mention that you heard me on the awesome Schweiky Media Business Booster webinar series. If I can ever answer any questions or you'd ever like to have a conversation with me on any topic, I am a phone call or an email away, kevin at kevincanevel.com, and all my contact information is on my website and on my LinkedIn profile. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your interest. I hope this has been helpful. God bless. Let me know if I could ever help you. Rock on.